Hi, my name's Phil. I'd like to talk about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss Ed Davies' argument that Keir Starmer should Trump-proof the UK with closer European ties. Now, I've already discussed this week how EU experts are making it clear that Trump's presidency has got no practical bearing on anything we can do with the EU in the sense that some people think. However, it's also interesting to see a report that Labour may be of similar mind to Davy anyway. But first, for daily political commentary, please click the subscribe button so you don't miss out. So we're once again in the phase of wild speculation about the political direction of the UK. Trump becoming presidency throws potentially a huge spanner in the works. I said on more than one occasion that I was hoping against hope that Labour would just get a few relatively quiet years in order to begin its work. You know, no, no more plagues. No jolts to the global economy. Can we just have that? Can we just have, just for a few years, can we just calm down? And then America elects Trump back in charge again. And you just go, right, thank you. Do you ever get the feeling that your life is cursed? And because of what Trump has said he wants to do, lots of people are assuming we're going to be forced to choose between the USA and the EU. Um, it is, of course, not that easy. We're closer to most of the EU in terms of values and common interests. Uh, we have more trade with the EU than the United States as well. So a bit of a no-brainer if you had to make the choice, except, of course, we can't really just abandon either power. Even if Brexit never happened, this Trump presidency would be a massive problem for a Labour government and we would still have to make every diplomatic effort to limit the damage. The only silver lining is I think it's safe to say we're probably not going to see Keir Starmer holding hands with Donald Trump. And as Gabby Hinsliff wrote in a comment piece, it's galling to see Starmer ingratiate himself with Trump, and we're going to see a lot more of it, but it would be horribly negligent if he didn't. What we don't know is if it will work. And if it does, how well it will work. It's hopelessly naive to suppose we will be able to avoid any ill effects of the Trump presidency. Although we're left speculating on a lot of things, some obvious areas of conflict are clear. We cannot really be in alignment with Trump on Ukraine, um, Palestine, goodness knows what he's going to do there. Uh, an article in Byline Times sets out how Trump might strategically tie both conflicts together to his own benefit. It's worth reading. I'll link it in the description below and it will lead into another video that I'll be doing in the next few days. Another point which is, is made in reports is that it's not just Trump, it's not just that Trump will pursue policies which are at odds with our government, like you often get situations like that. In fact, it often seems to be the case, just as you get one type of government in, in Britain, then the opposite then emerges in America. It happens a lot. It's that Trump doesn't have a clear trajectory of his own policies. Like the Foreign Office can work with it. If, if Trump was stable... And he said, well, these are my policies, even if they were really monstrous policies, which they are. And you could sort of go, well, he's going to do this in this order. And the, they can work with that. The problem is he, he has a habit of just announcing things out of the blue and suddenly switching. He's like worse than Boris Johnson. So officials can't always see things coming. So you get caught out. So you have to react quickly. And being honest, I'm not sure Starmer's great at that. Like... He's good at long-term planning. We've seen that. He doesn't strike me as someone particularly nimble in a chaotic situation. I'll have to hope I'm wrong on that one or that he learns new skills very quickly. And it is possible that we find ourselves in a situation where the price Trump is demanding is too high for our government. I saw a suggestion, and the Foreign Office will be avoid trying to avoid this like the plague, that maybe Trump would give us a choice. You know, uh, I'll talk more about this in the stream this evening. Like, so what happened if he said, right, this trade deal, uh, yeah, I quite like the idea of this trade deal where we basically own your NHS and destroy your agriculture. Um, how about we have that? No, we're not really keen on that. Okay, I'll just slap 20% on all your exports to the US. Which one would you prefer? Now, in such a scenario, and I'm hoping it's not a realistic scenario, then engagement with Trump sort of has to fail. So what then? Well, Ed Davey has suggested that Yes, we should work with Trump, but we should Trump-proof the UK by seeking urgent cooperation with the EU, specifically over military aid for Ukraine, as well as economic ties. Now, this won't actually Trump-proof the UK, as I say. In fact, 
it's almost like the sort of British exceptionalism thinking that made Brexiteers think we could do things that we can't. Uh, people who know their stuff kept saying that, you know, when you're not a superpower, there's not a lot you can do against one who is. The EU, with or without the UK, is very worried about how Trump is going to affect them. So if the EU doesn't think it can Trump proof itself, then the UK has no chance. And we wouldn't have been able to in the UK, in the EU, sorry. But Dave is misleading choice of words aside. Like the, the point is, um, we do need to work more closely with the EU in terms of countering the common threat from Trump. And it seems obvious enough to me, we cannot guarantee being able to take the edge off Trump's policies. And it might be foolish to try and spend a lot of time trying to do so without the backup plan anyway. So closer ties with the EU is obviously going to limit the damage in another way. And the good news is that what Davy is saying seems to be what Labour have been saying, although in private. There was an article in The Eye which has been talking about how Labour have been preparing for the possibility of a Trump presidency. They're not now reacting. They've been thinking about this for a long time. They've not been caught on the hop, which is a good thing. They have accounted for this in their plans. So although the article is making it clear that a Trump presidency is very bad news for Starmer, which is an exercise in stating the obvious, it also makes clear that Labour have been working on the possibility for a while. And we can see the truth of this in the way that Starmer has worked on building up close links with not just Trump, but some of his key people as well. Not so much Elon Musk. I don't think they get along. And the report, the article reports that someone familiar with these conversations within Labour about Trump has suggested that Labour actually do see a push for closer EU relationships, specifically on Ukraine and trade, as the best way to deal with Trump. So if this report is accurate, it looks very much like Labour have already been agreeing privately with what Davy is publicly urging. So in terms of practical application, what we don't know is whether Labour have a plan to persuade the EU of this or if any conversations that the EU have been having about how to deal with Trump include the UK. So we know about the standoffishness over one another's priorities in the lead up to this election. You know, the EU have said, oh, we want these things. The UK have gone, yeah. And then the UK said, ah, oh, but we want these things. And the EU have gone, yeah. But how will the UK and the EU approach change now that we know what's coming in January? Now that it's no longer hypothetical, it's coming, we know it's coming. That is a huge unknown. For one thing, we know the EU is basically counting down the days to the end of Hungary's presidency. Fortunately, it does end just before Trump becomes president and it's Poland's turn next. I think it's fair to say they're going to prioritise Ukraine's defence. What do you think? What we don't know is if the EU have a plan for Trump in the same way that, that individual governments may. Because it's easier in a sense for Starmer. Like, he can just get a load of advisors around, ask them what they should do, agree on a course of action. For example, there's reports in the Telegraph suggesting that Labour will be boosting defence spending next spring. So there was all this talk about, you know, getting our defence spending up to 2.5% of GDP and Labour going, yeah, of course we want to do this, but we're not sure when. Well, if the Telegraph are not lying, and they seem to be basing this on an interview with Labour, by the way, then um, it's going to be next year. <laughs> um, and that's the thing you see, you know, when you're a government, you can have these discussions behind closed doors and, and keep them behind closed doors until you're ready to announce them. But because the EU has way more decision makers, making it much harder to corrupt, of course, but also means the discussions are essentially more out in the open. But we haven't really seen much of them. So that might suggest that those talks have not begun properly yet. So it'd be interesting to see what happens when they do. It may be that it's not just important, but now very urgent that the UK government comes up with ways in which the EU benefits from closer engagement with Britain. You know, it's one thing for Labour if they're privately saying closer EU ties are the way we're going to deal with Trump. So we know the UK is prioritising EU relations. They've said so publicly. They're not making any secret of it. They're passing legislation to make it easier. We know that. We now hear that they've been privately drawing the conclusion that EU relations are also the best way to weather the orange storm. But we don't know that the EU see the UK as a priority concern regarding Trump. 
So as policy experts have been suggesting, although the EU may well have to rethink its approach on a few things, the UK is probably going to have to do the running on this. You know, I think we're going to be seeing next year whether Trump derails Labour's plans or if Starmer really did work out a comprehensive plan to deal with him. Because I talked earlier this week, just a couple of days ago, about how Rachel Reeves, even as it was known that Trump was going to become president, was calm as you like in saying that the budget was set, the budget is fine, we're, we're good with this. And I said at the time, it seems a little bit risky uh, to say your budget is now fine. Unless, of course, that budget was designed with the idea of a Trump presidency in mind. But there we are anyway. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, you can join for memberships. Thanks for watching. And until next time, I'll see you later.